I want to talk about what it is to truly be happy most of the time, 80, 90% of the time, maybe even more. And what it is to get your goals in an easy way versus a struggle. And what it is to really push through the struggle, you know, that whole idea of struggle and pain, I'm going to suffer, but on the other side, it's going to be amazing. And what that's really about. Let's talk about the struggle first. You see, so many people really believe in the struggle. I have a client recently in one of my six month groups that's been talking a lot about the struggle. I just have to push through the pain. I just have to force myself to do it. And when I get up and force myself to do it, then eventually I start to like it, but then eventually he quits too. And we were talking about his cycle, like with running, like I hate to get up and run, but once I'm running, I'm happy, but I don't keep running. I'll run for a while, then I'll quit or I'll exercise for a while, then I'll quit or I'll push my boundaries for a while and then I'll quit, but I just got to do it. That's life. Life is suffering. Life is pain. He, he remembers, he reminded me of a quote from Mike Tyson. I can't even remember the quote, but about the pain and the struggle and how when you get to the other side, you succeed. And this makes me think of people like Goggins or Dan Pena, how, you know, you're just going to do it. You're going to get there and one day you'll be a success. Well, what if that's not you? It wasn't me. I did that for a long time. You know what? I remember the first time I got to $30,000 in a month in my income, I was the most miserable I'd ever been in my life. I was in such a miserable state. It was incredible. And I had, I was gut sick. I was using energy drinks. I was pushing myself. I was getting up every day and I'm like, damn it, I'm going to get there. And I was talking to my mentor at the time, a guy named David Nagel, millionaire mentor, right? And I told him, you know, all my life I've had gut issues and, and I'm just the worst I've ever been and I'm miserable and I have the most clients I've ever had in my life and and I don't know. And he said, well, there's the problem. I said, what do you mean? He said, look, if you're sick now and you're miserable now or before this started, as you get more success, you amplify what you already are. Now think about that. You amplify what you already are. And that was so true. I could see it. The way I felt about myself, my own self loathing, the part of me that loathed myself, there's part of me that loved myself too, had amplified a lot. My gut had amplified a lot. Uh, my gut pain had amplified a lot. I had reached a point where I actually had blood in my throat from thrush. I just felt like utter crap. And he said, you got to take care of all of that before you grow. Otherwise, every time you grow, that will take you out again. And that was super true. So that started a process of me healing myself and actually letting all the money go. It became one of the happiest periods of my life. At first it sucked. I've got to be honest, the healing part sucked. But then after I got to the healing part and really started to take a deep look at how I thought about myself and how I looked at myself, I really began to realize at a deep level that there was a lot of anger unprocessed inside of me. And when I started focusing on being happy, happier, when I started focus on being in more in love with life, regardless of the amount of money I had, the success, the clients really enjoying life, which is really a choice. It's a now choice. My life began to radically change. I began to radically change. And for a long time, I didn't bring clients back. I enjoyed being simple. I enjoyed doing less. I enjoyed not having much, you know, and taking what I had, and keeping it in the bank. And I learned to like me more regardless of my goals or my external circumstances. And this had a huge, huge impact on my life. I didn't know how much of an impact it was going to have. But at the end of this period, it was about a year, I think, I started dating again. I started bringing people into my life again. I started building a business again. And it was shocking how easy compared to before the business built, how much more fun I was having. The amazing women that came into my life that were so much more congruent with who I was than interested in what I did, uh, how much healthier I felt. I still was not 100% there, but I was so much better. And I realized that this whole idea of fake it till you make it, push, 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 just get through the pain, just doesn't work for everybody. And it's an illusion. It's, it's not even real. I mean, think about it for a minute. The people that are best at that, you know, your Goggins, your Mike Tysons, your, your people that are hungry for success, 
they're good at it for one of two reasons. Either they're pushing through the pain to get to the success and they have a crash later, Mike Tyson, for example, or they fall in love with the pain itself. And they love telling the story of the pain, like the little man that you don't know what I went through when I was young. He's wealthy now. And he's like, I walked 10 miles in my bare feet through the snow to go to school to become who I am. And he, the whole time he's laughing inside. He's enjoying telling the story. He's probably embellishing it a lot. And I believe the people like Goggins, they love being that guy that pushes. They're actually, it, it, it's part of their identity, right? And they love it. But the average person is not in love with the push. They're doing the push to get the goal to be happy. And that is the rub. That's the suffering. What if you just chose to be happy? I mean, the truth is, is that if you keep raising your consciousness and becoming happier and happier and happier, regardless of what you have, the easier life's going to become, the more joy you're going to have, the more you're going to get goals, the faster they're going to come to you, the more people are going to help you. I have seen this countless times. And I always have people in the comments that want to disagree with me and want to say, you got to get your goals to be happy. You got to have a woman to be happy. You got to have X, Y, and Z to be happy in the external world. And it's just honestly a crock of shit. You can be happy regardless of your external circumstances. This is something people like Lester Levinson would teach, right? Lester was amazing human being, taught releasing. And I don't know if I truly believed it, but as I get happier and happier and focus more on my own peace and joy, the more I notice that everything I want comes to me. It comes to me in weird ways I don't expect. It comes to me in odd ways I don't expect. But it comes to me and sometimes it, it shocks me. Like, I think this is going to take forever and it comes really fast as I get happier and happier in spite of whether I have it. And that's what I want to invite you into, into this idea that happiness is a choice. Now, the other thing I notice that people do is when they're stepping into the happiness, learning to be happy, they stop going for their dreams. They start saying, well, I'm just going to keep my life small because I'm happy when my life is small. But there's a part of them inside that wants to go express itself to the world. But they know if they step into the tension of that thing, that they're going to become unhappy again. They're going to become miserable again. And what's causing that is the tension. As their world expands, they're afraid of that expansion. But that's their self-love trying to expand. And so once you get your baseline happiness, you're enjoying life where it's at, you don't need it to be bigger, then you just expand. It's like lifting weights a little bit and you learn to be happy at the new expansion. And then you expand again and you learn to be happy at that new expansion. You expand again and you keep doing this, expanding a little bit at a time, learning to be happy with the greater level of responsibility. See, responsibility can either be a prison or it can be freedom. Really well-managed responsibility is freedom. You know, people that created systems and they have, maybe they have a big company with tons of systems. They only have to work 10 hours a week, let's say. And because they put it all together, they employed all kinds of people, empowered all kinds of people that, and all these people are making money and they're giving back to the world. Um, they're all paying their taxes. Everything is good. They're feeding their families, right? and you're making money because you coordinated all this for everybody to benefit, and now you're free. You built this beautiful system and now you're traveling the world skiing and, and surfing and, and you're still helping all these people because you took time to manage tension really well at higher and higher levels. Now contrast that to somebody who's, got, who's keeping their life small because they don't want to deal with greater levels of tension. There's nothing wrong with that either. If that's part of your purpose, maybe your purpose is to keep your financial life small and build a big family and grow and expand in the area of love with your family or friends or something else altogether. See, true success is, is your expansion of love and joy and happiness into the world in some form, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, whether it's with family, it doesn't really matter. It's just, are you expanding love in the world, which is what creates happiness? And I don't mean this foo-foo love, I mean real love, which sometimes has a no in it, sometimes has anger in it, sometimes pushes tension, and sometimes, uh, and it's it's an anger that's it's meant to help. It's not a real anger, right? It's a proactive anger meant to help somebody grow. But it's this state of, of being real and authentic. This is why authenticity is so 
powerful because real authenticity, not fake authenticity, not fake love, is real love. Real authenticity and love are synonymous. Fake love, foo-foo, new agey love is not love. Fake authenticity, new agey, I'm better than you because I'm spiritual authenticity is not authenticity, right? And when you start to really nail authenticity, you're going to be so much happier. When you start to really nail love, you're going to be so much happier. When you start to go free and just constantly expand your life in the direction your life wants to be expanded with the tension and the vulnerability and the constant expansion of tension and vulnerability in life, you're going to be so much happier because being the nature of being in a body is expansion. You're going to want to expand in some direction. It doesn't have to be money. Could be. Could be health. Could be helping others to building a big family that, that has so much love in it. It's ridiculous. I talked about that earlier. There's so many ways you could expand. So I want to invite you into this idea that you don't have to push or fight your way through life that life can be easy and beautiful. This doesn't mean you don't have tough periods, but you can even enjoy the tough periods. You can learn to laugh at them because if your consciousness gets high enough, it, it, it's all going to be part of the video game that you're in called life. It's all going to be part of this game and you're not going to take any of it seriously anyways. You know, it surprises me sometimes the stuff today that I don't take personal that I used to get really upset over. And today I just laugh at. And it shocks me sometimes. And I remember crashing on my skis and, and you can see this bump I have here. I had an AC separation and it was pretty bad. It was about as bad as they get, right? It's horrible AC separation. I think it was a type four. I, I can't remember. I was in Switzerland. It was last year in March. And I stood up and I felt this big bone bumping right here. And I said, I don't think that's normal. Because <laughs> I did. I was trying to do a jump and landed wrong. And I had to fly all the way home with my arm in a sling. I had to have major surgery. I had to rebuild it with cadaver tissue. All this stuff. And you know what? I don't regret it. <laughs> I wasn't upset about that. Um, it was an experience that I needed to have and I knew I needed to have it. And I had moments of being upset, but they didn't last. So where is it you're holding on to anger that you don't need to? Where is it you're holding on to resentment? All that stuff. Where is it that you're pushing through all that resentment and anger just to get a goal? Where is it that you can learn to release and let go and bring peace and joy so you can get the realizations and the learnings out of what you did so you can have a better life? You can have an amazing life where you can look back on all this stuff and it's all just valuable lessons now. It's all teaching you stuff, making you happier and happier, helping others around you to be happier and happier. You don't have to fight with life to get ahead. You can just get ahead. And yeah, I'm not saying there's no struggles, but when you start to learn to live in courage, acceptance, love, peace, joy, gratitude, these higher states of emotions, and you start choosing them on a regular basis, the struggles are more like struggles in a video game. They're, they're part of the game. They're different. And life is so much better. Okay, I think that's it for this video. I know it was all over the place, but it is what it is uh, definitely comment definitely like definitely subscribe um, and I'll see you in the next video remember only the confident really live